In this video, we're going to talk about contact sets in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about contact sets in Fusion 360. Now, this was a request that came through, and this is kind of a tricky topic because there are so many varied applications for it. So there are two downloads in the description of the video. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of cases of where contact sets can work, where they need to work, and where they probably won't work. So first we have a design called contact sets and we've got one called Archimedes screw. So there are a couple of elements here. First thing I wanna do is I wanna turn on component color cycling because it just makes it easier for me to see which components are which. So this design has a couple things going on. We have a set of gears, and you can see right now they have revolute joints, but they're not connected to each other. We've got this slider on the right-hand side, and it controls this wiper arm on the left-hand side. You can see they move together. This object here has a planar joint, and it does currently have a contact set. So if we expand this, you can see there are contact sets with the gear, with that gear, and with the plate. So what this means is that this cannot move through the gear. So it's stopping there, but it's not really attached to anything else. Nothing else except for the purple plate and the gears prevent it from moving around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna revert the position. We're gonna talk about this example on where contact sets will work, where they're really the only option and where we shouldn't use them. So first let's go with the negative, where we shouldn't use contact sets. If there is a joint type that will replicate the motion that you're looking for, then avoid contact sets because it's gonna be extra processing and calculation. And honestly, if you move the objects too fast, then it can have the tendency to slip through solid bodies. A good example of this is gears. Now, when we have gears moving, the contact between them is typically on arced faces, and then there are going to be transitions between other faces. There'll be sharp points. There might be flat faces on arced faces. And this transition is oftentimes difficult because there are a lot of different faces that need to be calculated. So if we go to our contact sets, and in this case, this design already has a few, but if you don't have them turned on, you can go to assemble and uh, you can enable contact sets. It'll be enable contact set here. You don't wanna do all because it'll include contacts for all bodies and it takes a long time to calculate. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a new contact set. I'm gonna go between the two gears. We're gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna start rotating one. And you can see as I rotate it, the gears work and you can see everything works. But as we get to this next face where we start to make contact with two sets of faces at a time, that's when it starts to hang up. There's a little bit of a bobble there. Now this is a fairly simple gear. Obviously, if you have a more complex gear, then it's gonna be much different. This does help us understand things like the lash between gears. So you can see how much motion we have before we actually make contact. In the context of a mechanical assembly, designing your gears by looking at their contacts in the digital world is probably not going to be the most efficient way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable or delete that contact set, and I'm gonna create a motion link. So under assemble, we'll go to motion link. I'm gonna go between gear one and gear two. And this just simply says that when one gear turns 360 degrees, the other one does as well. And this is based on the fact that they're both the same number of teeth. If they were different number of teeth, then we would need to use that relationship there. But you can see they never actually come into contact, but it's still replicating the motion that we need in this assembly. When one gear moves, the other one moves in the opposite direction. And this really helps out because there's no calculation involved. All it's doing is it's looking at the center of rotation of the joint, in this case, the revolute joint for that gear. And it's rotating that a certain number of degrees every time this other one moves. All right, so now that we understand where the contact sets really don't work, let's talk about where they have to work. So if you have two objects pushing on each other, so if there's a, a pin or a gear that does not have a consistent mesh between teeth, or if you've got an object like this where you really wanna push something along a plane, this is where we really need a contact set. So again, we're gonna right click, create a new contact set. This time we're gonna go between this slider and this block. And I'm gonna right click and repeat that. I'm also gonna do it between that cylinder and this block here and say, okay. So now as I push this up, it's going to push the cylinder up. Now I have this set up in a way that the slider here goes underneath this other one. So you can see I can slide it back. And what this allows me to do is then slide this one down and I can just simply move that block. 
Now, it's important to note that we do not have gravity in this case. There, there's no gravity pulling these objects down, so we can only do so, so much with these. And you can see, because of the position of this, it's actually created a stop. If I were to move that out of the way, then I can push it past. So keep in mind that these are going to help you with the mechanical motion where you actually have physical contact and there is no joint that can replicate that. So let's talk about a situation where we have exactly that, this Archimedes screw, where we have mechanical motion and we really don't have a joint that can perfectly replicate this, or it might not seem like it. So what we can do is as we start to move, you can see that the Archimedes screw is moving and it's going right through that sphere. Now, what we'd like to happen is we'd like it to push the sphere up the tray or the tube. Now, in reality, this works great. Uh, you know, this concept has been around for quite a long time, but digitally, you'll notice that the Archimedes screw that I made has a bunch of different faces on it. And what that means is that we've got a sphere which has a single point of contact on the Archimedes screw and a single point of contact on the tube or the tray. And it's going to have to roll across multiple complex faces. So if we go to our assemble and we enable contact sets and we create a new contact set between the Archimedes screw and between that sphere. When we go to start rotating this, as we get to that sphere, it's gonna start pushing it. And you'll notice that it does sort of track along the Archimedes screw. But again, we don't have gravity, so it's not keeping it down inside of that tube like we would expect. So if you have a design like this, you might look at it and say, well, I really need a contact set to figure out how this is going to work or if it's going to work. But because of the fact that we don't have gravity in a simulation like this or a motion like this, it honestly isn't going to tell you as much as you think. So in a case like this, I would likely disable the contact sets and I would create some sort of slider joint for that sphere. So we're gonna do an as-built joint. It's gonna be a slider type. And the components are going to be the sphere and this tray, which is grounded. I'm gonna select an edge and I'm gonna allow that to move. Now you might think, well, that doesn't really give us the motion we need, but the trick to this is that we can now use a motion link and the motion link can be, be between the Archimedes screw Revolute or the one on this handle, it really doesn't matter. But if we take the Revolute of the Archimedes screw and we take the slider of the sphere, you can see that things are moving kind of fast. So I'm gonna slow this down to one degree and the ball is moving a little bit too much. Let's take it 0.05 and you can see that it's still going a little bit too much. Let's do 0.01 and now they're a little bit closer. But you can see what we're doing here is we're getting the relationship between the sphere and the Archimedes screw. So we need to get this a bit closer. If we do half a degree, we're getting closer and we might need to just simply add another zero in here. And let's do okay and let's just take a look. All right, so now as we move, you can see things are moving. We just need to get the relationship correct. And it takes a bit of time, especially with a design like this, but it can, it can work. You just need to spend a little time getting those correct. So what we need is every, let's say every roughly one degree, we're gonna go 0 0.005, and let's see if we're even closer. So that's not too bad. It gives us a good idea of what the design should be doing. We just need a little bit more work on getting those relationships right. And one thing you'll notice is that when we're using joints and motion links between joints, that this is a much better or much smoother process when you're trying to animate your designs. So if we wanted to create a motion study for this, for example, then we certainly could. Now I'm gonna take one more shot at adjusting this motion link. I want this to move a little bit more. So I'm gonna say 0.008 and start to rotate this. It's moving a little bit too much, but again, just a little bit of work and we can get that to work out. Now, another thing you might be thinking is we do have another joint type in here called a tangent relationship. However, that works well in very specific cases. And again, we don't have gravity, but with a case like this, where we have so many different complex faces against a sphere, it's really going to be something that you don't wanna try. I would really suggest that you think about things like using a slider joint, something that you can move the sphere up and down and using a motion link between some other joint, a Revolute or something like that, and just work out the relationship or the ratio between those. 
So I know this isn't a complete video on contact sets because again, it is a pretty big topic and there are very specific cases where it does work and it doesn't work. But just remember in general, if you can replicate your motion with joints in some way, then make sure that you do use joints first. The calculations and the computations that happen are gonna be much quicker, your assemblies will move much better, and you can still get that realistic motion. If you absolutely need to have a contact set, try not to do contacts against all components, just pick the ones where you think that it's important. So for example, this has a planar joint against this purple component, and that way the planar joint can just simply replicate this moving on plane very easily. And because again, we don't have gravity, it keeps it down to that plane. And then we can use a contact between just specific objects to limit the amount of calculations that are happening. Also, another thing to consider is to simplify your designs. If you're just trying to figure out how things need to move, if you make a simplified version where you don't have all the fillets and chamfers and all the curved details, that can help make an easier calculation for something like this. It just doesn't need to calculate as many different interactions between faces and transitions between faces. So at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.